Hey guys, Tyler here. So, I've made multiple videos over the past few years pertaining to Star Trek's Eugenics Wars, a series of conflicts over genetic engineering that characterizes part of the lead-up to Earth's World War III. But while there is much to say about the timeline of the Eugenics Wars and how they've been affected by temporal shenanigans, I haven't focused as much on the biology of the augments. This is mostly because the traits that make them unique are fairly straightforward and are pretty clearly explained in Star Trek. They're stronger, smarter, Harder, live longer, you name it. But what exactly is the science that went into creating them, and what does it say about the technological state of humanity in Trek's alternate history? In this video, I'll attempt to answer that question and more. Let's get started. I might cover sci-fi biology for a living, thinking about alien ecosystems, futuristic medicine, and what life could look like on other worlds. But it's funny how those ideas always circle me back to something much simpler, our own biology. The reality is, no matter how far out I go in research or storytelling, I still have to come back to my everyday body and health. As I'm getting older, the demands of my job mean it's more important than ever to pay attention to my health. I think we can all relate to waking up with neck and back pain, for instance. And between the cost of health care and how little free time there is to go around these days, that's where the convenience of using today's video sponsor ZocDoc comes in. ZocDoc is a free website where you can search to compare high quality in network doctors, choose the right one for your needs, and even click to instantly book an appointment. That's right, I'm talking in-network appointments with more than 100,000 healthcare providers across nearly every specialty, from mental to dental health, eye and skin care, and much more. Hey, I have all of those. Teeth, eyes, skin. You can use their filters to find doctors located nearby who take your insurance, are a good fit for any of your medical needs, and who are rated highly by verified patients. You can see doctors' actual appointment openings, choose a time that works for you, and once again, click to instantly book a visit. And ZocDoc appointments happen fast, typically within 24 to 72 hours of booking. You can even score some same-day appointments if you need to. And if you're like me and prefer not to talk to somebody on the phone, ZocDoc is perfect for booking over the web with just a few clicks. Stop waiting, stop guessing, and start getting the care you need. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Orange River to find and instantly book a top-rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash Orange River to find and instantly book a top-rated doctor today. Thank you so much to ZocDoc for sponsoring us. Now, let's get back to the video. <music> Before we dive into the how, let's examine the what. The firmly established physiological traits that augments have, which can give us a clue as to their creation process. The original augments are designed for agility, being more durable and having five times the average human strength. This durability is exemplified with resistance to directed energy weapons, taking multiple shots with a phase pistol or phaser to stun one. And they can even resist a Vulcan nerve pinch. Their heart muscles are also twice as strong, and they have 50% higher lung capacity. They have enhanced senses and are resistant to sickness, their blood containing platelets capable of regenerating from virtually any disease or toxin. This blood could be used to cure or even revive medical subjects via transfusion. As mentioned earlier, they have longer lifespans, as much as twice the average humans. Their enhanced intellect, double normal human's IQ, enables them to learn very fast such as how Khan is able to design advanced weapon systems upon being woken up in the alternate reality. But despite their superior abilities, their genome still has major defects. The Augments are belligerent, arrogant, and ambitious, and they have a diminished sense of morality. One scientist involved in their creation would note, Superior ability breeds superior ambition. In Enterprise, Dr. Eric Soong theorizes a defect in the Augment's genomes resulted in a malformation in the base pair sequences regulating neurotransmitter levels, the cause of their heightened aggression and violent behavior. The original series and Star Trek Into Darkness explicitly placed the first generation of augments as having been born in the mid-20th century, more precisely the 1950s. In the latter, McCoy identifies one of the augments as being 300 years old. This would be consistent with the idea of their creators overlooking the augments' personalities and being unable to correct them due to the infancy of the science. And importantly, in Space Seed, the augments are distinctly referred to as the product of selective breeding, 
not genetic engineering. At the time the episode was written, the structure of DNA had only been known for less than 14 years, and we were still over 30 years away from completing the Human Genome Project, nor had we even successfully cloned any other animals yet. Because of this, we can deduce that the first generation of augments was not necessarily cloned in test tubes or produced by in vitro fertilization, as suggested in various Star Trek novels. No, when Spock says selective breeding, he likely means just that. Breeding, as in mating humans over multiple generations to produce specific traits, like dogs. This is arguably even darker than cloning or genetic enhancement because it implies, well, women, possibly young girls, being forced to carry super babies against their will, probably in the early years after World War II. We could imagine this being a Western response to the Ubermensch concept associated with the eugenics policies of Nazi Germany, which is not totally out of the realm of possibility given the U.S. absorbed the talents of many German scientists after the war. Selective breeding, also known as artificial selection as opposed to natural selection, could have used exposure to chemicals or radiation to encourage a higher frequency frequency of random mutations. These augments would have reached roughly their 30s by the time of the 1990s eugenics wars, in which they seized power in over 40 nations and began battling amongst themselves before being overthrown and exiled from Earth including Khan and his followers, aboard the SS Botany Bay. And Stavos Caniclius, later found by the crew of Kirk's Enterprise on Phylos. Genetic engineering was totally banned to prevent similar conflicts from happening again, presumably building upon previous regulations like the Shenzhen Convention mentioned in Star Trek Picard. However, it may not have been outlawed everywhere all at once, as these laws are referred to as being decades old in Enterprise, suggesting continued debate over the issue following World War III. In any event, remaining Augment embryos were confiscated by Earth authorities and placed in cold storage, as seen in Enterprise. As I discussed in my video about Strange New World's prime timeline alterations, in the Season 2 episode, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, we find out that the dates of the eugenics wars have been pushed from the 90s to the mid-21st century, concurrent with the period of World War III confirmed in Star Trek First Contact. I theorized that this could place the original series, and at least the first few films in their own timeline, separate from what's now called the Prime Universe. I reasoned that the writers of the Next Generation era shows seemed to express a discomfort with placing the eugenics wars in the 90s, which is why they generally avoided the subject, hence why Los Angeles looks untouched by nuclear war in the Voyager episode Features End. But I did happen to overlook some dialogue in the Augments-focused episodes of Enterprise that still point to a 20th century origin. These include Phlox commenting on the sophistication of the science for the time time period, and soon warning Malak could confirm everything people have said about augments for the last 150 years. Depending on how you look at it, though, this could technically work multiple ways. Under the original continuity, 150 years would refer to the time between Enterprise and the end of the eugenics wars, but under the new paradigm, it could refer to the mere cultural discussions around the ethics of human cloning that have been happening in the real world since the 1990s, when we, in theory, became technologically capable of doing so. Eric Soon's ancestor, Adam Soon, holding up a funding report for Project Khan, dated 1996, in the season two finale of Star Trek Picard, which mostly takes place in 2024, is one of those Easter eggs that looks cool on the surface, but also kind of just adds to the confusion. It probably refers to research that preceded the funding of cloned augments, though it's unclear if it's from a pre or post altered timeline. My job is so hard, guys. Either way, it's conceivable a secret human cloning project could exist on early 21st century Earth and Star Trek, which is why moving the date of the eugenics wars, while controversial, has some logic to it. As for the 20th century augments being referred to as genetically engineered in Into Darkness, the non-canon tie-in comic Star Trek Khan alleges that Khan and his contemporaries were ordinary children who were kidnapped off the street and given genetic enhancements. Somewhat plausible given this kind of technology has existed since our 1970s. One real-life early example is the creation of the first recombinant DNA molecules by Paul Berg, who in 1972 combined DNA DNA from the monkey virus SV40 with the lambda phage, which typically infects E. coli. And in 1974, Rudolf Yenisch created a genetically modified mouse by introducing foreign DNA into an embryo. 
Production of genetically engineered insulin was announced in 1978, and the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 1980 that GMOs, like fruit you buy at the grocery store, could be patented. And in 2010, scientists created the first synthetic genome by inserting DNA into an empty bacterial cell, which then went on to reproduce. This preceded the development in 2012 of the CRISPR-Cas9 technique, which can be used to specifically alter almost any organism's genome with ease. It achieves this by delivering an enzyme with guide RNA, a short sequence of instructions, to cut DNA strands at desired locations and insert or remove new genes. This can technically be done on living organisms as well, but since the young Khan in Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow looks to be probably no more than 10 years old, CRISPR-Cas9 was probably used in his creation. Since the 1980s, many advancements in genetic engineering technology, even for crops, have been set back by legal challenges and protested by environmental groups. But underground research like that surrounding the augments in Star Trek whether it be in the 20th or 21st centuries, does, once again, have some technological basis. So to summarize, there are three different methods by which the augments could have been created. The earliest technique, which was probably used to produce the augments depicted in Space Seed, evidently involved pure selective breeding over generations to achieve desired results. This would have been an outgrowth of prior eugenics practices during the World War II era, even by the United States, which performed illegal experiments like infecting African American men with syphilis without their knowledge over the span of 40 years. If the Kelvin timeline had has any historical differences from the Prime Universe prior to Nero's incursion, then perhaps the story of Khan and his fellow Augments being genetically altered could be true, although much of Khan's testimony regarding his personal history in the tie-in comics may have been fabricated to garner sympathy. And finally, the versions of the Augments created in the early 21st century are likely straight-up clones probably illegally designed using CRISPR-Cas9. The science used here would have built upon knowledge and techniques developed since the completion of the Human Genome Project in the early 2000s. But the imperfect nature of human cloning still would have resulted in neurological issues that caused the augments to become aggressive and tyrannical, establishing augment dictatorships in the lead-up to the final nuclear confrontation of World War III. As you can see, the uncertainty as to how and when the augments were created in Star Trek's history underscores the messy nature of the eugenics wars as part of Star Trek's lore. It's one reason I kind of hesitated to even make this video, but perhaps in future installments of Star Trek we'll get a little more clarification as to how all of this unfolded. In the meantime, I encourage you to check out my other Augments related videos, including my video about the size of Khan's empire, now partially outdated probably, Strange New Worlds timeline alterations, and my video on the Illyrian species, whose cultural practice of genetic engineering makes them outcasts in the 23rd Century Federation. Links to all of those are in the description. With that, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash orange river, link in the description, or become a YouTube member by clicking the join button on my channel page. I just want to give a quick shout out to all of my donors who allow me to bring on outside talent like editors to make more high quality content for you to enjoy. By becoming a patron and member, you also get access to awesome perks like behind the scenes photos and videos, patron and member only polls, name in the credits, merch discounts, and more. Or you can drop a one-time Super Thanks or PayPal donation. All are appreciated. Links to my PayPal, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description too. Also, just as a quick reminder, I do have a second channel, Orange River Plus, where I've uploaded the VODs of lots of my gaming streams, with more on the way. And in addition to some other goofy one-offs and extra behind-the-scenes content, I've officially made it my second streaming platform, so be sure to subscribe there too, so you don't miss any new content. That's all I have for this week. Live long and prosper. Hey you! Yes, you! Sitting there, cuddling your seven of nine body pillow! Listen up! It's me again, the ghost of Dr. Asukaza, emerging one last time from reptilian hell to deliver an extremely important message! All three issues of Star Trek Endurance are now available as an omnibus! If you don't know what the word omnibus means, don't worry, Erica didn't either! 
All you need to know is if you sign up for two dollars or more at patreon.com slash orange river and click on the pinned post, you can read all three issues of Endurance as a single webcomic. It's that simple! And if you're watching this in the future and that post is no longer pinned, just search Star Trek Endurance and if you can read, you'll have no trouble finding it! On the other hand, if you're a YouTube member, just scroll on Orange River's community tab. And unless you have the attention span of an Adosian suckerfish, you'll see the link there too. Okay, back to reptilian hell for good now. Do you like merchandise? If so, head on over to the new and improved Orange River merch store. That's right, Orange River is now officially on Spreadshop. I've got a bunch of awesome new designs, including All the Way Down, All the Way, Vape God, Tally, aka Best Girl, It was totally worth it. And what is perhaps my greatest design yet, being married to my husband. Plus, I've got some of my classic designs like Orange River Arrowhead, N7, Metroid, Mycelial Network, The Mycelial Network is like Mycelial Network, and more. And there are even some new products like Orange River Hats. That's right, Orange River Hats now exist. Visit the link in the description to get discounts and other special deals on items from my store. 